As we continue our tribute to Women's History Month, my guest today may look familiar to some of you. I introduced you to Michelle Summers in 2019. She's an event planner. She had been her own boss for eight years when I first met her. After quitting her day job and turning her passion for event planning into a paycheck. And now we want to catch up and find out how things are going for Michelle Summers, now of Michelle Summers Designs. Hi, Miss Ann. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. Thank so you for having me. So excited to catch up with you. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. What inspired you to become an event designer? So, um, I, honestly, I was always a creative. I got that from my dad. So, growing up, I would always sketch fashion. I was styling hair or just sketching floor plans of buildings or homes, things like that. So, fast forward 2010, I got the opportunity to design my sister's wedding. And everything that could go wrong went wrong on that day. <laughs> when I tell you it was bad from a designer's perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I took all that back home and tried to figure out what could I do? What, how can I make the next event better? And so fast forward to 2024, I'm still chasing. How can I make my next event better than the last? How can I make it look nice? So I'm still chasing that almost 14 years later. Oh, I love to hear yeah. that. So um, what, what was one of the biggest obstacles that you faced that actually led you to being where you are today? Yeah, so um, as I said, I loved floor plans and doing things like that. So um, it was the fear of being comfortable. Um, prior to me going to being a full-time entrepreneur, I worked for two engineering companies for about 10 years, and I had to come to that decision if I was going to leave or do full-time entrepreneurship, which was event design. So um, it was just really just taking, getting that fear of comfort and a steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. every week so <laughs> and then the unknowns of being an entrepreneur so that was one of the biggest things that I had to get over and once I did it it's like okay we can with the support of my husband and family you know we it was an easy an easier transition for me so that is yeah. awesome to hear so you started with just um, designing events weddings things like that but you have thrived your businesses have grown now you have three brands yes yes so we are now we're we're formerly your signature events um, we were branded last year to Michelle Summers designs and then early, later in the year last year I love love so I just mm -hmm. love being around it so I just couldn't help myself um, I got into as I said earlier I love fashion and so I decided to go ahead and get into the bridal gown so we opened mm -hmm. Zobella bride boutique dedicated to my daughters okay. and then um, decided I want to go even further a lot of our guests that are at our events they love our florals mm -hmm. so I wanted to have a way for them to get the flowers that we have so we opened up Herbie's flower shop which is named after my son so for um, Herbie's flower shop now allows um, guests or anyone to enjoy our flowers every day so yeah just keep <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it changes yeah that is that is awesome yeah. what a great testimony for people who are are afraid to make that first step to start their own business. Absolutely. Okay, so what advice do you have for a woman looking to start her own business? Who um, I would say just do it. Just mm -hmm. do it. That's the hardest part is just starting and doing it. Um, I think for me, it helped that I also had a good community of other women. And as crazy as it sounds, our gifts and what we have. And you, you may think that what you're your gift and what you have is not uh, important, but there's a whole lot of people that are waiting for you mm -hmm. to explore and showcase your gift. So also con connecting with that community of women, family, church groups to support you and push you because believe it or not, they're ready to support and push you. Very good. And our last question here, I ask all of my guests this, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, that's a deep one, Miss Ann. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would honestly, I would say to not be fearful of being perfect. So I think I, not think growing up, I wanted to be perfect in everything I did. And I took some of that into my 20s and trying to per be perfect and trying to perfect everything. And I had to unlearn some of that because I did mess up and I did have to start over. And so in not being perfect, it allowed me to like, Michelle, you can start over, it's okay. You can have a new idea and it's okay to start over. So not being afraid to start over and not having to always be perfect. 
Love okay. that. Perfect advice. Absolutely. Love that. Michelle Summers of Michelle Summers Design. So nice to catch up Thank with you. Thank you for having me, I'm going to be posting this to our website so you'll be able to catch this story on our website. And if you want to know more about all of the services that Michelle Summers offers, uh, you can find her link on our website as well. And so you can also catch up with her experiences and what's been going on at Michelle Summers, Michelle Summers.com. All right. Thanks for being with me, Michelle. Thank you.